Hi there, it's me, Proteus A. Gender, um, Zebra Extraordinaire. So you may be following my blog, invisiblydiagnosed.com. I know it's backwards, but it's still there. Um, and you might already know, but let me fill everybody in. I am hypermobile and I am having some serious problems with my hypermobility. And so let me show you what hypermobile means real quick. And then what I want to do is show you what I'm learning in physical therapy to work with my body to try to make this all better. So first of all, we're going to go through the Baton scale. There's a nine point scale. Um, and if you can do the things, you get a point. And so I score seven. And so the ones I can't do first, I cannot touch my arm with my thumb. Not quite, but it is, it's hard to show you, but it's close. Okay, but I can do the 90 degree pinky. So that's a point for each, one, two. I have, let me see, can you see the angle there? Hyperextendy arms, both sides. That's four total. Um, let me stand up. You're gonna hear me say ow a lot. It's okay, it just hurts. Everything hurts. So I have both hyperextending knees. That brings me up to six. And then the standing forward bend, where I guess you can't see the bottom. Let me move back. Let me move back. There you go. Um, apparently, it's not that normal to be able to flatten both hands on the ground, but. That's what I need to do to get a good stretch in. And so I have a very mobile body. We suspect that I have Ehlers-Danlos, but that testing is gonna be way in the future. It's very difficult to get on the testing list and through the process. So we're pending diagnosis, but no matter what comes back there, this is a connective tissue disorder of some sort. My collagen is crap. <laughs> um, I like to say that my joints are held together by um, chewing gum, probably fruit stripe gum specifically. And so this is what we have to do. I already did the four standing forward bend. When I do that, I have to be very careful. If I stay too long, my hips will pop out and my lower back will overextend and it won't have the support it needs coming back up for the rest of the day. If I don't do it enough, I have extreme lower back pain this clicking and grinding that takes over, um, and what I suspect are just like intense muscle spasms back there. So the standing forward bend, you just start all the way up and you go forward all the way down. Um, you can bend your knees if you need to, like do what your body needs to do. <laughs> and um, don't trust my joints to tell you anything, they tell lies. My hips tell all the lies. Okay, so we come all the way down but then I have to let myself breathe into it and loosen into it because that's not enough, actually. And so in the second breath, it deepens. You can see the bend in my elbows now. Then I will have to take my hands and push against my thighs to actually stretch out those vertebrae in my back. A lot of times they'll pop. I've already done this today. So it's, well, several times. And if that doesn't work, I have to get underneath my feet to pull to extend my back. So that is what a forward bend looks like for me. It's an important pain relief move. I have to make sure my back's supported coming back up. Use my knees and my hands to support me because my back can't do it. Um, that was my knee. My, uh, I don't know how many of these pops you'll be able to hear on there, um, but that was my knee popping coming back up. That just meant it was going into place though, so that was a good pop. There's good pops and bad pops. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Okay, so we did the standing forward bend that starts to stretch out the back. Now we're gonna stretch out the hip area real quick. So we're gonna go down into a table pose, which I'm gonna go sideways so you can really see me. Let me come back this way so you see more of me. Perfect. Okay, now from table pose, you take one leg and slide it in front of the other and then just Slide that all the way down to the ground. That helps open up the hips. Now, if I stay in one position, 
this also becomes dangerous because my ligaments will overstretch. And so I stay here till it feels loose. And then I do dynamic changes. Get rocking back and forth to see what feels comfortable, what feels uncomfortable, what needs to loosen up, what's resisting me. Oh, that felt really good. And then all the way down on this side as well. This side's harder for me to lean back on. Um, there's a catch in my back where the clicking and grinding is that really prevents that. This helps. This is just a playlist I have on Spotify. I think I uh, am followable on Spotify if you want to find me. But of course I don't own the rights to any of these. I do have a podcast on Spotify if you want to check that out. So um, that was amazing for my lower back. And coming around from it, I can tell that my hip is up. And so I'm gonna to try to butterfly it back in. Man. There's not further we can go down here, <laughs> and it's not just coming back, so it's okay. We'll just... Oh, it's frustrating. Okay, that's fine. It'll come back. They always do. Okay. So now, while I'm down here, we're going to do some PT for the lower back. And what they want me to do here is take my hips and sort of decrease that opening at the small of the back so that it becomes flat. You know, it's hard for me to get my back stretched out enough to not compress it when I do this. So I have to wiggle on that and sort of wiggle my back apart so that the ground helps separate those vertebrae. <coughs> There's a lot of back and forth with my body. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm engaging those core muscles to train those, and I'm engaging the glutes back here, doing a little squeeze. So you can see right there, when I do the squeeze. You'll also notice when I stop doing the squeeze. Um, so here's a thing that's going on while we don't count this out because I have ADHD, so we'll just do it for a while. For a while is my favorite measurement. Um, Anyhow, I have nice, strong, big muscles. My big muscles like to power through. And my big muscles have a habit of doing all the heavy lifting while my little muscles don't engage at all. And so I have really weak joints, and when my big muscles try to power through, they damage my joints, my little muscles, my ligaments, the tendons. It's not fun. And so the point of PT is joint strengthening, joint support, um, strengthening those small muscles in controlled motions. Um, we avoid static stretching for me because it's dangerous and I can literally overstretch and not come back from it. Um, so there's much more movement-oriented stretching, dynamic stretching, um, and even in these motions, I need it to be rhythmic to work with my body. Cold stops, cold starts hurt. So being able to be in rhythm with my body enables me to really commit for a much longer time as I remember to engage <laughs> those cheeks again. Um, and I, I think it's okay, like you forget to do it perfectly and go, oh yeah, oh yeah, my butt cheeks are, oh yeah, oh yeah, my abs, let me, let me squeeze those. And you keep going. I mean, you're going to fail sometimes. You just are. You're also going to succeed at it sometimes. And I know that this is helping, even though when I started, it made the pain a lot worse. Um, even though my hips are still popping out, clearly. Somehow in all of that, it's less, have more control, 
that matters. So that was for a while. Um, and now we're going to move on. Now they do a bridge. They don't want me popping up a lot. They don't want me to hurt that lower back. It's about engaging these muscles and these muscles as we go. And so pop up, pop up. It's about slow controlled motions. Again, working those small muscles around the hip joint. When I talk about hips, I'm talking about where the femur actually attaches right here with the pelvic joint. I'm not talking about where the curve is. That is not the actual joint. That is your, um, your ilium. And it's part of the pelvis, but it is not the hip joint. That is down here. And so we're strengthening all of these muscles in front and back. I have no idea what number I'm on. Um, I love Julia Michaels. The song is amazing. It's a total bop if you can hear it. We don't see it, but I want to, I want to. Oh, oh pro tip for the adhd -er. Um, sing along while you're working out. It's really hard for me to keep my brain engaged. Uh, for a lot of reasons, it's hard for me to keep my brain engaged. I get really, really bored with it. I don't want to count. I don't want to, like, the repetition. Um, so anything that makes it more entertaining for me really makes it easier for me to be in. I can definitely feel what I just did in my hips. We're going to take a moment and stretch that back out. I'm not going to lie, that hip is still mad at this angle. <coughs> Whew, it's going to be interesting when I stand up. I apologize for any noises I'm going to make in advance. Let's, uh, this one's fine. This one's fine. Just feeling the stretch. That was, wow, wicked. It's okay, though. Okay. Now, let's pop up. They also want me doing an exercise that I find cumbersome, but it's important for those little muscles in that femoral attachment. So they call it a clock thingy. You're going front and back and side. Again, we'll do this for a while. I like to measure things in songs. I, uh, I used to, when my kid was learning how to count, I used to try to get them to count for me. They weren't really interested in it either, but I tried. Really though, this does enable me to go until I feel a certain amount of resistance uh, by not counting, which my physical therapist calls dosing. And it is important to make sure you're getting the right dose, the right resistance, the right repetition, the right um, number of sets. I get that. But when you're a zebra, my body's not going to follow anybody's plan. And so I have to respond to what is going on here. <coughs> and in that, when I feel like it's difficult, I'll keep going for a little bit until the difficulty starts to become exponential. So let's go up really quick. And then that is my body telling me things. That one was kind of out of control, so I'm getting my stability back. I'm going to focus on the alignment of my knee over here. This is not locked. So it can support me better. And now I have to do another forward bend, which um, you do three times in sun salutation anyhow. I guess I just spread mine out through the whole team. <clears throat> I 
when I'm at work, I do another one that they have me do that's a seated march, where it's just me sitting down and lifting one leg at a time. And I work that one into my work day the whole time that I'm sitting there. I'm not going to do that one now because I prefer ground exercises. Um, sitting, depending on the chair, becomes really dangerous for my lower back right now. And so I'm going to do it at home, support it on the floor, but a little differently. So laying back down. I think standing up was good for that hip. Okay. And so anytime I do lower crunch work, I have to put my hands under my lower back to support my hips or my back will go out. So I'm gonna have to do that thing where I scoop my uh, spine across the floor to sort of lengthen it. Then I'm ready to do all kinds of cool stuff here. And so all of this uses the weight of my legs and natural motions with my hips in a variety of ways. I'm gonna start with circles. I'm not doing the shoulders today. We'll work on upper body in the next video because it's just a lot. But they have me doing a lot of circles with my arms. We're gonna go the other way because I'm starting to feel the click and grind and I try to avoid that. So you want to be able to stay even. Okay. These are great because you can vary the intensity based on where you put them. If they're like that, it's really intense on the abs. That's awesome on the abs. Um, or if that's like a little too much for you, then you can bring it back up here. And more of the way to support it on, you know, the femur here and the quads and hamstrings. <laughs> I, uh, I used to do a lot of these and I stopped doing them because of time. And I really think that not doing these is part of why I'm having all of the issues I'm having right now. These do not come from my physical therapist. They're just part of a routine that has helped me feel my best. And so I have <coughs> needed to cultivate a body routine for myself that is accessible, um, low cost, and doable in a very small amount of space. I know I have this lovely fireplace behind me right now, but I've lived most of my adult life in trailers. And anybody who's lived in a trailer knows that is the, the tiny house of origin. Um, and you still have to feel like a human being. So this is what we do. Okay. Oh, that was both knees. Hold on. I'm just going to stretch that out. Okay. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we're we're going to do one at a time so that my hips are a little more supported. And still working. Does anybody know how many of these I've done? Me too. So I have to be careful not to tweak my back. And this is telling me that I need another stretch. So now we're going to do a crossbody stretch. Um, it's one of my favorites. You won't be able to see all of me, and that's okay. And my shoulders are going to stay down. Trust me that they're down. And you keep one leg extended, bend the other leg, pull it across, while keeping your shoulder down. Let me bring you down to my level. Actually, 